Hi, folks, and welcome to another episode of GOAFS. That's Getting Old Ain't for Sissies with Big Tom Rivers. Tom's an old hipster with 47 years of radio to remember. In places like Chicago, Milwaukee, Atlanta, Minneapolis, Indianapolis, and plenty more, believe me. Mm. GOAFS was Tom's idea for baby boomers who want something to help them with growing older, but with a touch of the goofy, offbeat, and absurd. And that describes this man to a T for Mm. Tom. This portion of the show is being brought to you by Ed's Humane Bait Shop. The only bait shop in the world that sells only severely depressed worms who have lost the will to live and have volunteered to go on suicide missions for fishermen so that their lives won't have been completely in vain. Ladies and gentlemen, my good friend for a long time now in a real nutcase, Big Tom Murray. Thank you, Doug Dahlgren. What a great pal he is. I love the guy. Doug has some great childhood memories, folks. As a child, Doug's family's menu consisted of only two choices, take it or leave it. (laughs) Last time on episode 36, for those of you who listened, we talked about how you should poop, beer bellies, and we talked about a self-help book for women on how to kill your husbands. But first, listen to me. Here we go. Did you know you can text me here at GOAFS, 214-707-5741. And I'll text back whenever I feel like it. Uh, You can email me here at GOAFS, all lowercase, if you're new to email. Boy, if you're new to email, you are slow. I can't imagine who you could be, but you never know. Email me now at tomrivers at iCloud.com. Got it? Hope so. Hate repeating things. I really do. Did you know you can now find this fine podcast on the iHeart Podcast Network? Google+, Tumblr, SoundCloud, Spotify, Twitter, YouTube, 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 and uh, my own Facebook page. You could friend me if you want. And uh, right now, we're moving on to uh, episode 37 of G-O-A-F-S. Getting old ain't for sissies. I'd just like some pot in your Coke. Boy, I I remember the old days. That did happen. But I'm talking about Coca-Cola. Gee, things go better with Coke. My fellow baby boomers and Woodstockers get this. Coca-Cola Company says it's eyeing the cannabis drink market, becoming the latest beverage company to tap into surging demand for marijuana products as traditional soda sales slow. Now, before you indulge in visions of a sugar and weed high, you should know that Coke is interested in drinks infused with CBD. The nine psychoactive ingredient in marijuana that treats pain but doesn't get you high. That's from Bloomberg News. Hey, Amazon's got their hands in everything. Now they're going to have the corner on Christmas trees. And I mean the corner Christmas tree lot. Uh, Remember those when you were a kid? I do. Could be endangered. Amazon will start selling seven-foot Christmas trees this year. The trees, wreaths, and garlands will go on sale in November. Some will qualify for prime free shipping, and Amazon will offer pre-orders so shoppers can choose a delivery date. Not everyone is thrilled with this idea. I don't even know if I am. Because uh, picking out a tree and hauling it back home is all part of the holiday fun. Got that one from Business Insider. Amazon is really, really getting their hands on everything. And uh, last time, I teased you with what would happen if all the bees died. Well, bees are dying and their colonies are collapsing all over the globe. They've been in trouble for years now, with multiple threats leaving their future uncertain. But what does it mean for us if the bumblebees die? What if they become extinct? 
We often take for granted how dependent we are on bees for pollinating the foods we eat. About one-third of the foods we grow and eat require animals for pollination, and honeybees are responsible pollinating up to 90% of them. Wow! If the bees were to die off, much of the fruits and vegetables we eat would no longer exist. Even more, the animals dependent upon those foods would eventually die off. Alfalfa, one of my favorite characters from The Little Rascals, would uh, fail to thrive without bees. For example, it's a staple food for cows. A dramatic bee die-off could potentially crash the beef and dairy industries. Plants in the wild would also suffer. Migratory birds, which rely on forest fruits and nuts in order to survive, would suffer and eventually die off. Now, according to the FDA, the estimated value of the crops that bees pollinate is around $15 billion dollars. Add to that the value of the honey and beeswax they produce, and the bees are actually a vital contributor to our economy. All right? Uh, Some suspect pesticides are responsible, while others blame mites, internal parasites, alien species, even starvation. Whatever the cause, it leaves uh, suddenly and unexpectedly devoid of nearly all their worker bees, little worker bees. What's the future of bees? What can you do to help? Well, bees might be struggling for survival, but you can do your part to help in their aid for survival by planting flowers to keep them fed and refraining from using pesticides that could poison them. Some great choices for bees are daisies, zinnias, marigolds, crocus, aster, hyacinth, uh, hyacinth, goldenrod, and uh, wild lilac. All right. Do you realize it's fall already? Wow. Doesn't feel like fall, does it? Can you believe it's fall? Fall is the favorite season of the nation, with 29% in a recent poll responding that they prefer this time of year. Summer is our second favorite season, followed by spring. Only 7% of those polled said winter weather was what they liked most. You gotta be crazy. I mean, skiing, you know, when I was younger wasn't so bad, but no thank you. Not anymore. Not not when you're over 70. Uh, That's from YouGov.com. The joys of autumn. Now that summer has uh, come and gone, let's take a look at the joys of autumn. There are crisp crops of new apples. There are the falling leaves, pumpkin spice, Uh, Everything, the World Series, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and of course, the best thing about autumn, football. Of course, football is having its own problems, aren't they? A lot of empty seats in some stadiums. Woo! Do you see some of those games over the weekend? Hope you enjoyed the sunlight over the weekend. Uh, There are dark days ahead, and this has nothing to do with politics. Yuck, yuck. Now that it's fall, you get less and less light until the winter solstice. That's uh, the 21st of December. And the days will grow colder, too. Here's one that'll hit you right in the gut. Have you been going to church lately? Hmm? Do you attend your house of worship religiously? Well, just half of Americans do. Maybe a little under half of Americans 40 to 45 percent of Americans who seldom or never attend church include those who simply don't believe in God or organized religion. Sad. As well as those who are willing to admit that they don't get around to attending. Oh, they don't have time or they're just plain lazy. That's from a Gallup poll. Baby boomers. Do you have crinkly eyes? You got what they call crow's feet? You may not love those wrinkles, but others do. A new study reveals that people view men and women with eye wrinkles as more sincere. One reason, a genuine smile causes the skin around your eyes to fold, while a fake smile never reaches your eyes. So having crow's feet automatically makes you look more trustworthy. They did that study at Canada's Western University. 
Let's talk about the ultimate TV binge for a second. Netflix says it now has some 700 original programs available. That comes out to about 5,000 hours or seven months of TV. Seven months of television. To give you a little perspective on just how much time that is, you could watch every game of the NFL season, including playoffs, and spend just 1,830 hours in front of the TV. You could become a freaking zombie. Or Diane Feinstein. That's for those of you who think. Unbelievable. And I uh, got an email. I really did. I got an email from my doctor regarding my special that I did on uh, poop on the last episode. He asked if I could... Uh, add this as an addendum. He said, nice job, Tom, but uh, please add this. The frequency, how many times you poop. Though some lucky people have a bowel movement every morning, most people don't poop every day. In fact, if you go anywhere between three times a day and three times a week, you're within the normal range. So I'll... uh, leave you on that. An actual email from my doctor correcting me or adding to the information on poop. You never have enough information on poop. That's what I always say. Next time on GOAFS, Getting Old Ain't for Sissies, episode 38, Baby Boomers, your favorite band, Kiss, will be no more. Mac or PC? Which would you pick? Teabagging. What is it? And would you do it? Boomers, I'll finally get you, your kids, or grandkids to stop picking your nose. I have that power. That and more coming your way on episode 38 of GOAFS with me, Big Tom Rivers. Bye! Thanks for listening to another episode of GOAFS. Getting old ain't for sissies with your host, my friend, Big Tom Rivers. GOAFS with Big Tom can be found and heard on these great podcast platforms. The iHeart Podcast Network, Google+, SoundCloud, Tumblr, Spotify, Twitter, YouTube, and Big Tom Rivers' personal Facebook page. And please don't forget, on any of those social media pages, remember to check off like, following, or favorite whatever choice they offer. Also, email the big guy at tomrivers at icloud.com. You know, he does answer his emails. For Big Tom and GOAFS, I'm Doug Dahlgren in Chicago. Enjoy your evening. This portion of the show is being brought to you by Moral Bow Wow, the world's first cigarette for macho dogs. That's Moral Bow Wow, the canine cigarette with the liver-flavored filter.